happy afternoon so before starting to uh, like a gcp mi ai model building and deployment so let me ask you to download a couple of contents which we gonna run today so let me post it in our chat here so please download this from this repository so it contains like a pdf so what we're going to discuss and what are the steps for deployment model de building and end to end completely is there and next is like there's a, some couple of hard codes is there so where we'll be exposing an api so python codes are there and finally there's like a, a link for a big query so that's our data set so please uh, download it and uh, please give me a thumbs up. So let me start it. So hello everyone. So myself Rupesh here. So today we're gonna discuss about like AI model building and deployment complete end to end. So before that, like uh, uh, in last video, we discussed about the basic concepts of our GCN and how to create our account and how to utilize our Vertex AI how to use the storage account and everything. So based on that today, we're gonna do our intensive hands-on training now. So let's start and let's get to know about what is Vertex AI. So, so Vertex AI. So Vertex AI is like a machine learning platform for GCP. So how we are doing an entire end-to-end -end process, like say from example, data ingestion, the cleaning the data, finding the missing values, transforming the data, and then we'll be moving into uh, training the models. And then we'll be doing evaluation, deployment, and finally we will be using a testing. Mm -hmm. So that's our normal life cycle of our AMI development. So the exact same in a cloud is like, uh, we want to deploy, that's the additional step, so which we need to do. Uh, I guess like most of here are like for students or like uh, recent graduates. So basically in a, in a machine learning organization or like any other organization. So how we will be de deploying our models is we'll be using the fine saved or like a pickle format or a PyTorch format model. With that uh, format model, we'll be exposing to our endpoint. Say uh, it's gonna be like a REST API or a, like a fast API or a Flask and anything. And with that API, we can bind it in a front end. And that's how the AI based uh, web apps are being developed. And this is common practice for every models. Say for example, even for computer vision or, or models or like uh, NLP based models or anything. So this is the basic framework of a machine learning models and life cycle. So let's jump into like Vertex AI. So as I said earlier, Vertex AI is like one of the best platforms for machine learning development for GCP. So it contains like a couple of main important things. So one is like a, a data ingestion part it has, next is like a model training part it has, model evaluation part it has, deployment part it has, and ML ops part it has. So in data ingestion part, so in data ingestion part, we have options of like three different options we have in GCP. So we can directly source it from cloud storage. It can be like a different blobs of data, it can be like a textual data or a, a tabular data or a image data or a video based data or a or audio based data as well. So we have different forms of data. We, it, we can restore it in our Google Cloud Storage. So this is one option we have. And next option is like a, from directly sourcing from Google BigQuery. So you guys are a bit aware about what's a BigQuery. So uh, hello everyone. So Basically, like uh, we can source it from BigQuery as well. And finally, there is option of like uh, uploading in our data set in our models. So these are the three different types of data ingestion process, which is uh, carried over in GCP. So next one is like important step is like a transformation of our data. So we all aware that once a data is loaded, next important step is like, we need to like test train split it. And then we need to do like a, exploratory data analysis part, and then we'll be converting, either it's gonna be like a, for regression or a classification task, we'll be doing like one hot encoding or label encoding. We'll be doing basically transforming the data, and then we'll be doing a scaling and normalization of the data. So these are like a couple of stuffs which are covered in a transformation part. Once the transformation is done, so next our important step is like a training the model. So in, in Vertex AI, there's like a two different types of training is being carried out. 
so one of the one important training is like auto ml so auto ml is uh, is already a pre built machine learning process which is being run inside and we don't need to do any specific set of codes or do anything so basically we'll be giving the the task either it's going to be like object detection or like a tra uh, speech transition or a, a classification or a regression task whatever the task so it internally without no code it generates our regression or classification or whatever the task it is and it has like several sets of data which are predefined so they are like a tableau based data textual data video data image and audio data and you guys may be aware of one thing so today there's like a, there's a big boom of large language models so if you guys are aware we can even do a training of a fine tuning or custom training of large language model using vertex ai so vertex ai is that much level of capability it has and uh, of course we don't need to worry about like whatever the computation or anything and uh, there's like a uh, different sets of uh, gpu processors in internally which it's running over it and which may not be available in our local environment or our local organization support and then is our custom model the custom model is where an important role is being played so it is based completely based upon our user preferences so and uh, different types of data we can use there we can do a combination of of data like textual on the tableau data or a video based or audio based data also we can feed it and we can do custom training once the custom training or like auto ml training is done next important step is for us uh, this evaluation hello guys so please whoever has uh, recently joined kindly just download the github link which we share in our messages so that link has our entire course structure right now and it has like a coding also in it and a bigquery link please download it and uh, in a couple of minutes we'll be just going to our hands on session so that is very crucial for us using that link so once we come to evaluation part so so let let me wait for a minute so people who have joined recently please kindly download our github repo so let's uh, continue with our evaluation part so either it can be like a classification or a regression task so we'll be basically using a confuse uh, for classification we'll be using a confusion matrix and for a regression task we'll be using like msc or rmsc values everything either it's going to be like a nlp task or like computer vision task we'll be using this with set of matrices so entire matrices is will be covered in a like a evaluation section so we don't need to code anything and uh, it's just a kind of like a drag and drop or a clicking options is there so next is our deployment once we are satisfied with the best model which we have so we'll be saving it our model in a model registry and then we'll be deploying it and finally is what we're going to do is like a exposing the endpoints so in a in a in a couple of minutes we'll be discussing about how can we expose it and uh, and finally is our model monitoring it's for, it's for like a model retraining purposes and everything and basically this is like a, a complete life cycle and each and every part is dependent of each other of an entire life cycle so suddenly if you want to do a, like a retraining after 6 months of a usage of a model so this is the exactly connected pipelines of that so each and every points are interlinked to each other and in a in a real time situation of a vertex ai each connections are completely secured and is completely encrypted so that there will be no like a uh, privacy issues or like a uh, data breach issues so now let's discuss a bit in detail about like a uh, building of ai models so as we discussed a bit earlier so there are like two different types of buildings so one is like a auto ml and another one is a custom so uh, before getting into like a conclusion first we need to get ourselves in a clear that why do we need to choose a auto ml and why do we need to choose a custom based model so each and everything has like a different set of eight edges and everything so say for example in auto ml so we will be having only like a four different types of data will be there and we can't do a mix or match of like audio or video or uh, 
or we image with the textual we can't do or OCR we can't do that so basically it has some rules and regulations which we need to follow based on the google's perspective and in automl it has like a basic environment and uh, say such as like a, a normal pytorch version or uh, some uh, exactly like a python versions will be there and heavy complex versions of like uh, extended versions will not be available uh, since it is like a basic requirement and if there is a company which has like a, a limited expertise in a data science or like AI team and they have what they want to achieve a, a product, they can utilize the use of AutoML provided a, it's a basically it's a where in AutoML is like a, it's a fast scale environment. So without no code and everything and we can use it for like a proof of concepts to understand how it is working or like a, what exactly happening internally, we can understand that. And basically in AutoML part, the companies will be like a very less number of size and team, say like um, five to six members and they are having a startup and everything. So they can't invest heavily in a, in a data science expertise team or everything. So their tendency to move is or no code environment and which is AutoML part of Vertex AI. So that's the important part today we're gonna to discuss about, which is a no code and it's AutoML. So now let's jump into like custom-based code. So what's a custom-based code? So as we discussed earlier, a custom-based code where we can do based on our specification and requirements, and we can uh, do any set of complex environments, PyTorch or uh, a TensorFlow or, or any other versions we can use simultaneously. And we can have uh, different containers and registries, and we can even deploy our own Docker files and everything into our custom based uh, curated environments and we can uh, utilize a mix of audio based or video based or textual image based data and everything and here the custom uh, of a uh, model development it requires like advanced expertise in like a data science team and everything so it requires like uh, the knowledge of hyperparameter tuning and additional settings and everything so basically the custom uh, development is being done at a like a bigger size team level and like a mid-scale company to a high-level companies they have, and they wanted to improve their model performance, maybe like architectural support and everything. That's the reason they jump into cloud-based custom model development in Vertex AI. So uh, this is a basic introduction which we have given, and let's jump into our um, deployment right now part and building part as well. So this video is completely, uh, we're gonna focus on AutoML part. So uh, there are like around like 14 to 15 step steps, which is there. And uh, I have attached a PDF as well for you. So once let me go through the entire steps, we'll go into like complete hands-on session and uh, and you guys gonna implement by yourself. So first step is like, as I said earlier, is we gonna ingest a data. So data ingestion is to be carried out in a cloud storage part. Either it can be like a cloud storage or like a, in a vertex AI data sets where we can directly load our data. So one option is like, uh, you need to just uh, develop a data set with a you know, name and everything. And next is like, you need to, in uh, like uh, finally what type of data you're gonna use, either it's gonna be a picture based or tablet based or textual or a video based data. So once it is clicked and next is our important task, what we gonna do? So based on a tablet data, we can do either like a regression classification or a forecasting we can, we can do. So in our session, we're gonna do a, re a regression and a classification tasks. So that's the step one. And next step two is like, we are gonna upload our data set. So we are directly gonna utilize a BigQuery for this. So we have a, I have a separate link for that in a textual file, which you guys have. So we're gonna click that BigQuery and then we're gonna upload that the link there. Once the link is uploaded, we'll be getting a data. So today we're gonna discuss about like a fraudulent transaction data and we're gonna do like a classification of that. So this is the exact data which we're gonna use and it contains like around like 18 rows, 18 columns it has. It contains complete of like a, 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 like a float data type it has and we'll be doing a classification for it. So next important step is like, we need to do a train a model. 
So once you click the train the model, the next important step is like we need to give the name of the, the classification or regression task objective. We're we going to finalize that. So once we click on that, our next part is like a, this section where we'll be discussing about auto ML or a custom training. So now today we're going to discuss about only auto ML and uh, it's not a custom training one. So kindly select the auto ML part. Once you select the auto ML part and next is automatically you need to train a new model and you guys are gonna give a name for it. And we're gonna give a description of, of our choice. If you're not interested in description, uh, it's, it's completely optional one. And next important step is like, you need to define that what's exactly the target column we're gonna talk about. So in our fraud detection, so we will be discussing about what exactly the classes are. Uh, are they gonna like a fraudulent transaction or non, not a fraudulent transaction? So that's the important uh, goal of our today's uh, AutoML classification. So once we selected the model and everything, so this is the model place where we'll be discussing about like uh, different types of data is there and we'll be converting into like a transformation of a, a float to our numeric uh, like a categorical to numeric or everything we'll be discussing here and next important step is like we need to define what is the matrices we're going to decide so here since we have like a this problem data is completely imbalanced one so that's the best option to use a AUC and we are seeker for it So once the entire, like we're defining the model and everything. So next we gonna do is important step is like the maximum number of nodes per house. So this is the important concept here where it is like used for billing purposes. So I, I will suggest everyone to use a one budget of one node house. And uh, obviously uh, this training is gonna take you like two hours, something like that. And next important step is like, we are gonna start our deployment mm -hmm model building stage so that at the end of our video everyone will be having a at least a developed model we have and one more thing important thing is like uh, whenever we build a model there is a concept of early stopping so if you guys have used the pytorch versions or like a neural network there is a concept of early stopping so whenever the based on uh, like say example we'll be having like a number of epochs will be there so once we reach the optimal number of like say the, the good number of errors we have, our model will be stopping at that step. So that is called like early stopping. And irrespective of number of epochs, it stops before at the specific point of results when it is completely achieved. And from that point, we'll be taking the best performing model and then we'll be deploying it. So guys, let's jump on to our GCP now. Guys, please let me know, can you see a GCP? Console. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, in our last session, we discussed about like how to log in and sign up to GCP console. So we're not gonna do the same step now. So we directly go in, going into cloud storage part. Uh, this one, I'm gonna just explain you how a cloud storage, how to upload a data and how can we utilize it in a, mm -hmm. in a model de development. So, but uh, in a real time, we're not gonna use the cloud storage. Instead, we're gonna use a BigQuery. So for basically we'll be creating a new bucket here. This bucket can be named like anything. Let me name it as like so labels are completely optional. We don't need to do it. And it's like a multi-region purposes. So it's it's best option to use a multi-region one. And our storage is like a standard storage. And this is important part where like uh, we'll be giving access control. Like uh, we are defining 
the entire cloud like cloud storage access to every sort of products available in gcp and not a specific set of products alone so we are not into like a, it's not a protected object or anything so we can use a none for it data encryption is like a standard google data encryption that's it's the policy and then we can create confirm So this is like a place where we can uh, upload our data set here. So let's say we are the uploading a property data. So now it's like successfully up uploaded. Let's get out of this bucket. So our name is like a housing crisis. So it's gonna be crisis. And now let's jump into Vertex AI. So before uh, jumping into Vertex AI, there'll be option called like enable all recommended APIs. So since I have already uh, like recommended, so I'm not getting it. You guys will be getting it. Please do it. So this is the basic dashboard of our Vertex AI. So we have like a model gardens here. So this is going to be, it has like a large language models, everything for a, for computer vision, it has efficient nets is there. And for based on specific task or object detection or like sentiment analysis or like entity relations or like uh, summarization, so everything, we can use the predefined, which is available here. And we can find unit. So next is, uh, is our workbench here. So basically the workbench contains the, the notebooks where we can uh, use for like a Jupyter Labs or like a do a programming stuff. So you guys are aware on that. So this is the pipelines. So once we build a model, we'll be getting a notification on, a, on what exactly the pipelines is happening here. So this is for like a, a complete like ML ops stuff. So this is our, uh, our data store. So where we'll be like uh, uploading our data sets here or like uh, giving it links of uh, cloud storage or a uh, big query or manually uploading it here. And uh, this is our, uh, a training pipeline here. So once we upload the data, we start our training process. So that is stored in here. And each training has its own set of unique numbers and versions can, is done internally. And based on the best set of versions of model, and then it is moved into model registry. So directly it's moved into model registry. And here, after that, we'll be doing a deployment process completely so let me know you guys are on the same page give me a thumbs up so let me start with a data sets uploading part okay let's start with our data sets part please navigate to your data set here and next is you guys going to create a new data set here Rename it as like a new data or your some other stuff. New data one. So ours is going to be like complete tabular one and it's for regression and classification task. The region is like US Central Iowa and it's Google encrypted one. So we don't need to touch anything from this. And next is we're going to create it. Okay. So now uh, we have like um, a three different parts here. So upload CSV from your computer manually or like select the files in a cloud storage or select a table of you or from a BigQuery. So for learning purpose, I'm gonna show you how to upload in a cloud storage. So before we, we had uh, created a bucket in a cloud storage, it's called like crisis one. So we're gonna select it. Let's see. So this is the crisis one. And we have the US property housing. 
we are going to select that. So next is we are going to create it. So this is the, uh, the basic step. So where we will be loading our entire data set here. So you can see like it has like a total of 18 columns and everything and you can generate the entire statistics about it. What is it? It has like any missing values or not or it has like any distinct values or not exactly. So this is exactly from a cloud storage and, and this is the place where the train new model we're going to click on run on it. But now we're not going to use the same. So we're going to go back and we're going to utilize BigQuery, so, so that we're going to create a new one. Tabular. You guys don't need to touch this. So select it from the BigQuery. So I have a already shared with your uh, your textual text file. So this is the link. So it automatically uh, got a spot path. So next is con continue. So once we uploaded, automatically it has given a summary, like uh, it has total of 31 rows and it has like a uh, completely 96% of float and just 3% uh, of like integer values in it. So this is the entire data set. It's of 18, no, oh, sorry, 31 columns. And we gonna predict or like we gonna classify the class. So next important step is we just need to click the train new model. So we are not gonna use AutoML on pipelines. So pipelines are the one which we directly for like uh, the regular and uh, MLOps part. So I will just give you an overview on the of that but both are more or less same, everything. So uh, please don't submit this, basically. Just we will try to understand what exactly happening inside a pipeline. So uh, just we're gonna give a name. It's Google encrypted one. So we just no, no need to touch anything. So we're gonna do like output directory for this. So we have to create. So we are creating a bucket. So we have created result one we are selected and our task is classification and our target name is integer so it's our wish to it's optional to do like a description and everything so here is like a test train split so a default is like a we have like 80 percent for training 10 percent for validation and 10 percent for testing so it's up to us we can do like a, we can uh, do our manual column split or anything. So let me go with like a random split and we can split also like chronologically and everything. So next important stuff is to continue. And here, this is the place where we can um, remove uh, a variable here. See, for example, I don't want V1 and we can remove it automatically here. And if you want to do a transformation, so to convert a new, into numerical or a categorical, or uh, if 
if you're not sure what's going to happen, we can just do a like automatic. So automel will automatically decide what exactly needs the transformation for it. So it's going to be like a label encoding or a other sort of encoding. So Mono just asked, if we create a multiple data sets, will that charge money every single time? Of course, Manoj, like uh, the it will be charged under like a cloud storage. At the, since you guys are having like a free tier version, we can utilize it. But uh, it's a good practice that if you're not sure what is the data or anything in a real company, so it is not good to um, create a multiple data sets and it, it's completely waste of resources and everything. So I would, I would advise that you can, uh, after finishing everything, you can uh, deallocate the resources or delete it. So once the transformation is done, so we have advanced options. So basically we can uh, give what column is like an extra weights by it. Say for example, we have like a, a total, or uh, this since it is a fraud detection, so amount is gonna be like a, a crucial part and the time is gonna be there. And these are all like a couple of variables there. So it's up to us to decide what exactly is our column weights. So, it's going to be like time and since this data is completely imbalanced which we saw before and uh say example like it has like a 96 percent of like float and one percent of integer and it's completely like a imbalanced one so that's the best option is to use aoc curve for that so once once we have like uh got this information for us the next important step for us is to do a cross validation. So our uh, here, uh, basically, you guys know what's the purpose of a cross validation and everything. So it's up to us to decide what's the percentage of cross validation we're gonna use it, and we can we can have a number of trials as like uh, five, and uh, a certain trials and like a parallel trainers is gonna be thirty five. And if you want like additional settings, that that's that's completely optional. It's not up to use. And next important step is like our budget. So it's a best practice to use so like a single node however, so that like um, we won't be charged too much for anything. And next important step is like uh, stopping or early stopping. So just guys, just it's, it's a very crucial part. And next important step is like what type of compute we gonna use it. So are we gonna use a normal CPU based or like a, a high performance GPU based? So in our case, we'll be using like a standard per, like a CPU. I'm not going to use like a high performance GPU or anything. And the same for uh, cross validation and everything. And then for model evaluation also, we're going to use the standard version. And next is a batch prediction. So we're going to use the standard version for it as well. And then finally, we're going to do a submit option here. But uh, I will suggest you guys not to submit right now. And uh, we'll be getting back now for our uh, non uh, not a uh, pipeline based de deployment so please select other option so now we have automatically loaded and our data set is loaded from bigquery and our task is to do a classification and we're going to select auto ml part and we're going to do a continue here so next is like we're going to train a new model description which sub optional for us and next class is integer so as i said earlier we're going to have like a random split of everything google encrypted one and here we're going to do like a completely like a automatic transformation we're not doing any manual or anything and we're not going to omit or do anything so let's go to like advanced option since our data is like a completely imbalanced we'll be moving into auc prc curve and we'll be continuing and we'll be going a budget of one. We're gonna enable early shopping and we're gonna do a start training. So kindly let me know if you guys are on this page. So it looks like most of them are on this page. Let's go to training section here. And we can see like our, uh, our model is getting being trained and everything. So it's taking auto transformation part and everything. 
these are all the number of columns it has. So basically, uh, this training will take around like one and a half hours. So I will uh, suggest you guys to just run this and uh, then we can uh, proceed further. And in meantime, like uh, I'll just explaining you what is the next steps and everything. And uh, let's jump on to next steps. So once the entry training is finished, so you'll be getting information of what's the exactly the model is being done, how the classification is, is done. So we have received our, uh, we have selected like a ROC UC curve and uh, we have got the information, the entire information of a precision recall, ROC curve, precision recall and threshold. Since as I said earlier, our uh, model is heavily imbalanced one. So that's the best for us to use ROC and uh, PRC curve. So our model uh, confusion matrix, it shows that the class number one is like uh, exactly predicted, but the class um, class number, sorry, class zero is exactly predicted and class number one is like, it's not that much correctly predicted. So that's like a heavy imbalance in it. So let's see uh, how our model results will be performing. So now let's discuss about the feature importance. So for a classification task or regression task, so we need to uh, understand what exactly is our features and which all features are very heavily weighted or and other which all other features are not that much heavily weighted. So in our data set, we can see that it has like 31 columns in it and the column number V14. This feature is like very heavily important and it has it has like a very high scale everything and the least important is the v23 which has 0 0.57 so this will be a best idea to like omit this like uh, the least important one so that is a concept of like a variation inflation factor so it will give us information that like which variable is like highly correlated and which variable is not that much highly correlated and based on that vif uh, factors we can decide which variable is very important. So that's in our coding part. So in AutoML, we got the entire list of it automatically with no code. So once we have this information, our next important task is, task is to deploy and test. So once our model is completely trained, so next important step is we can uh, test our model. So this is a UI based testing. So automatically given by uh, AutoML part. So it, it has like a, like auto, like a self-generated values, which is pertaining to this data set and everything. And then we have, uh, as I said earlier, the single click option to, to check if like, uh, what's the predicted results are. So that is like, a, there's, it just looks like that's something like, a error from my side. So it is caused because of uh, our IAM. So IAM is like a access management. So there is some issue with the access management. Let, let's jump over to IAM. So if you guys are facing that access management or like a, there's like a issues with the control, please uh, do visit this IAM. I am the service accounts and everything. So next important task is to like make permissions. So um, uh, please do change this into like a, if you have like a viewer or editor, change this into owner. So this is a permission place where we'll be giving up permissions. So we have just given the permissions and everything. Hope this is gonna solve solve it. It's 
go to training part. So now let's deploy to endpoint. So kindly give a name for this. So have access as a standard access and a Google encryption, please don't change that. So once it's done, so important step is to like, uh, we should not change this tra traffic split. So let it be 100. And like, uh, we're gonna discuss about how many minimum nodes required for this. So it's a rule of thumb to have one. And next is like, we'll be like uh, putting in the, what's, what's our uh, mission specifications and everything. So it's gonna be like a high performance or a GPU or like a standard mission. So in our case, like we will be going with a standard mission. And then we'll be uh, enabling the model monitoring purposes. So, so model monitoring, uh, like, uh, so it's a place where like, uh, it, it's monitoring the model. So, so that like uh, our expected, uh, the performance of the model is met or not. So it automatically tracks each and every situations. For example, if there is like a, a skew in training or like a, there is a drift in the training. So model monitoring is, it's alerts us and like give, give us like, uh, if it crossed the specific set of, uh, a threshold parameters or not so it's, it's a rule of thumb to have a, enable the model monitoring every time once we start to deploy and everything so once once we get to uh know about this like in detailing so next we need to give our email so that like once it started to deploy we'll be getting an email from them that like uh our uh our model has been deployed and uh it's currently under process or like it's it's a basic set of updates you'll be getting so just have to give your uh, official email for that. So once it's done, kindly like uh, next is important step is to like uh, uh, let let to know like what exact where exactly is our like a training data is source. So since uh, again we are giving this why because like when there is like a drift in data or anything, there is a model retraining is happening over this entire cycle. So it is a very important part that like we need to give again. So what is exactly the data set data is sourced from so in our case like uh, we have the bigquery data the link so we can put it so the, the part got selected and our target column is like a uh, class so our alert threshold is like completely optional so next important step is like uh, is to deploy. So deployment is taking a while for us now. Let's see. Guys, let me know you have like uh, any queries until now. So what is the difference between auto ML in pipeline and other train new model? So uh, model is like uh, the, so auto ML part where you'll be getting a detailed uh, analysis and information. So what exactly happening inside that pipeline? Say for example, like uh, what is uh, uh, batch predictions are there or not? And uh, see, let, let me navigate there. So what exactly is like uh, the, it's for like a schedulers, so like a cron jobs or everything, uh, we can schedule it in this pipeline. 
So when there is like automatic ingestion of data, uh, say like uh, some at a daily at a night of 8 p.m. or something like that. So we can do a cron job automatically here and we can schedule it. So that is the only, uh, that's that's one of the uh, important benefits of like the pipeline job. And then we can export or like a, or like a connect it to a Power BI or a, any other source of uh, output generation files. We can uh, synchronize it that. So that, that's one of the important tasks with the pipeline build uh, other than normal build. So you guys have any other questions? guys let me know like if you have any questions like uh so if you uh if you engage only like you'll be getting to know more information about this hey, the training model is taking longer than expected uh this hasn't been created yet so is there uh, any other reason like a free account due to the free account or else is it based on the any other conditions that are there yeah, exactly. Like, uh, since it's like a free account, it's it's it, it also a reason, but actually it's not. So it is directly connected to a BigQuery, and like uh, since I said AutoML, so it will be like uh doing like all sort of like classifications internally, and it will be running different set of algorithms internally, and it will finally it only it will be giving us like a best model, and so that's the reason why it's taking a lot of time and one reason maybe like a, we have selected our normal compute one so like a standard of like 8 gb or i think like we selected 30 gb ram something so it is bit uh more than our local system or a computer which we have so i think like uh since it uh it is uh using a different set of algorithm that's the main reason why it's taking a lot of time for us to develop a model Okay, but I try to change those configuration to high end configuration, but still it is taking the standard 8GB one. Okay, can you share your screen? Yeah, let's let's have a look. Uh, this is uh, running still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Guys, any other uh, have a doubt? So our uh, we have successfully like uh, develop the model so our model got registered in like a model registry with like the best performing model so we can see that like a uh, So we have like a, a like a big query like a version information. So like total number of time it took and number of counts and uh, how 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 good is the target the rating which we have here. And it seems like uh, our performance is like uh, uh, near near like a hundred percent something. We don't have information about like a uh, number memory usages or everything. So let's get into this model. So here we can uh, look for like a uh, what's exact version of this model. So. So we can see like a uh, model, the hyperparameters. So in this part, like we can see like what exactly the uh, the logs and matrices are being used here. So so this is our like uh, logs. Total, total time it required for it and the cloud ml job this gives a like a basic like a, the logs and like a error measures uh, looking so not not that much deep required here 
So next important step is like uh, we can go back. Let's see the batch prediction. So batch prediction is not enabled why? because so it comes uh, in line with like a pipeline deployment. So once we do like pipeline deployment, we'll be getting a batch predictions and everything. So our uh, deployment is active now. So we can see that it's like an active deployment here. So now our next important step is like we need to navigate to our notebooks. Let's create a notebook. So manage notebooks, yeah. Guys, and I understand like uh, you have not been uh, reached till the deployment stage, but uh, I have given a complete PDF there. So it will like, um, give you like a step-by-step -step approaches and everything so i'm uh, every time available here you can just ask me any questions so let's open a jupyter lab now so now what we're going to do is like we have seen we have seen like uh, the deployment the prediction where with the ui the same the, the prediction and like same like uh, with a uh, with the rest api how we're going to do we're going to see it in a jupyter notebook so please open a uh, yeah, Python. So I have given a installation guide for Cloud AI platform SDK. Just run this. So it will take a bit while. So we are using a like a 15 GB in RAM CPU with a four core CPU. Okay. So successfully we have installed our uh, SDK. So next important step is like, we need to import our platform. So these codes are available in our document, which I shared with you. So next important step is to create an endpoint. Created endpoint, we're gonna put it here. So now we have this endpoint name, right? So it, it tells like the project, your project name, sorry, your project number, the locations, it which is a US central one, your endpoint, and there's an endpoint num ID. So now let's go to how far we can find this project number. So if you guys navigate to Google Cloud, Cloud Overview, Dashboard, this is your project number. Just copy the project number. And we're going to put it in this specific path. And next is our endpoint. So this we have in our uh, Vertex AI dashboard.
let's go to our vertex ai training our registry and so guys remember like uh, every time if you are having like multiple projects select your exact project so otherwise it will change your entire uh, billing and uh, billing information and everything So this is our uh, endpoint. This is our ID. So let's paste it here. So if we have any information, we'll be getting it. So our location got connected well. So our next important step is like, we will be testing the instance. And what we got is like our, uh, Class zero has 99% accuracy and class one is not that much good enough. So basically, uh, this is our prediction part. So this is how a machine learning uh, pretty, uh, like a uh, deployment is being done. So this is our crucial important, uh, this endpoint. This endpoint will be uh, like uh, plugged in with our uh, front end everything uh in a specific place so that's how these inputs are being manually uh typed in in our websites and everything and we'll be getting a response uh, in a json format or in a list format yeah so this is our uh, basic stuff so you guys you have like any any questions you can ask me i'm sure that you guys uh, has not like reached to this stage but uh, it will be uh, easier to follow my documentation which I provided to you. And uh, you can ping me at any time regarding these queries. So I'm open to help you. Yeah, that's, that's from my side. If you have any other questions, we can uh, answer that. So this is our uh, documentation part. So you have like uh, each and every information here. Each and every cases, how to do it. And step, step by step wise, I have just mentioned it here. So if you find uh, have any other queries, please, uh, please let me know. And one more thing, we have uh, have given you the documentation as well. So this is a document. So where, uh, like, uh, how to use your like a Jupyter notebook. So this I have like shown you like the installation of our SDK. Then we'll be importing our our uh, our uh, cloud platform. And finally, we'll be giving a testing instances. So that's that's the uh, pretty much for today's session so let's let's know the questions if you have and we can wrap up soon so if you have any other questions please do ask me
and uh, we we came to like the end of the session. I don't have any further questions. That's pretty much from my end. So looks better. So thank you very much for attending. So please do like uh, follow this and tell me like if you guys are like uh, for if you guys are facing any issues or not. So you can just ping me in Slack and everything. So it will be easier for me to help you back as well. Yeah, sure, definitely. But yes. this, these models are taking a long time to create. It's still not done yet. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm 100% sure <laughs> it will take minimum of two hours. And uh, that, that's the reason I have like uh, attached your uh, documentation. So it will be easier for you to step by step. You can follow that. Yeah. Yeah, sure. We will do it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.